Are you preparing to install a sprinkler system or simply replace some sprinkler valves and you're tired of the cheapy ones you typically find at the home centers or hardware stores? Well, you've come to the right place because in this video, I'll show you the best professional grade valves and where to get them. I will also go over some repair tips and discuss components like diaphragms. <music> Tom Lanier here with Sprinkler Pros. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video to get your free download to help you identify what kind of sprinkler valves you have. At the end, I will show you my favorite sprinkler valves and e in each category and why. As with most of my videos so far, I am mostly discussing products designed for residential and light commercial use. This is the bulk of the market. In a previous video that I will provide the link for, I showed the different types of sprinkler valves. In this video, I will show you the best professional grade sprinkler valves on the market and why they're the best. Over 35 years, I have dealt with dozens of different brands and models of sprinkler valves. Due to the difference in quality and design of all these sprinkler valves, I only use professional grade products. Of these brands, I have whittled down my choices to two brands. The brand and model I use are job specific. I will go into much more detail on sprinkler valves in a future video. How did I determine which valves and models to use? First, quality and durability. I spend much of my time dealing with sprinkler valves. I repair them and replace them as needed. I've dealt with thousands of them. There are some like these cheapy home center models that I don't even bother to repair. I just replace them if they act up. Keep in mind that with many irrigation products, just because it has a major brand name on it doesn't mean it's quality. Some stuff they make is absolute junk. Here on the central coast of California, we mostly use anti-siphon valves, especially on residential systems. In most areas, we don't encounter freezes too often, and when we do, it's not severe. Those areas that do freeze each year enough to need protection, folks put foam insulation wrap around the pipes and sometimes cover the valves with a box or insulated cover. Next is how do they stand up under adverse conditions like dirty well water, lake water, pond water, or gray water? As mentioned in a previous video on the subject, unless you have a good filtration between the water source and the sprinkler valves in these situations, you're kind of toast to begin with. Aside from that, you want to look at which valves are the easiest to disassemble and clean out. Accessibility in this case is a good reason to use anti-siphon valves where you can and install them at the proper height of 6 to 12 inches above grade, not underground. So serviceability is a biggie because most everything eventually wears out or gets a boo-boo, so it will need to be cleaned out or repaired or replaced. My MO, or mode of operation, is to repair what I can within reason on components that are worthy of repairing not just automatically replace things. When you choose anything, always keep the future in mind. That goes for other choices in life. How will I have to deal with that item down the road? What if it's me that must repair it? Have I bought something easy to maintain? Is it something that will likely be around 20 years from now? Have I installed it in a way that will make it easily accessible? Are there nearby plants or trees that may encroach on these things and possibly swallow them? How easy is it to service and repair? So what are the criteria for serviceability? How difficult is the valve to take apart? Always choose valves with hex screws over simple screws that require a screwdriver. The simple screws like these are way too easy to strip out, and then you're toast. Again. 
How accessible are the parts you may need, like the diaphragm assemblies? Can you get them at all? How easy are the components, like the diaphragms, to replace, especially if water is still slightly flowing through the valve and floating the diaphragm while you try to reassemble the valve? I'm providing you links to all these components on my resources page linked below, so go there instead, eh? While we're on the subject of diaphragms, know that the diaphragms and the bonnets for three quarter inch and one inch valves are the same, regardless of brand, and the diaphragm will work on its companion inline valve as well. You can order these through the resources page. Heads up, I avoid bashing on my videos, but periodically I feel the need to give you a heads up on certain popular products based on my experience. So, on this video, I am giving you a heads up on Rainbird's ASVF series anti-siphon valves. I don't care for them because how bulky, clunky, and heavy they are compared to hunters and ear trolls. Also, they have a diaphragm that sticks out from under the bonnet and is exposed, so over time it eventually disintegrates and allows for water to leak or squirt out, requiring a replacement of the diaphragm. The other two valves have diaphragms that remain internal and protected from the elements. Also, their replacement parts have become more difficult to obtain since it appears that Rainbird doesn't want to be in the parts business. Here's another heads up. Here's a design to stay away from. It's available by several different manufacturers. It's called a jar top design. It was popular about 20 or so years ago when it first introduced because you can unscrew the bonnet like a mason jar, but soon proved itself unworthy due to leaking around the top of the bonnet threads. So these days, when I find one that's leaking, I attempt to remedy it by cleaning it out and replacing the special made diaphragm, but nine times out of 10, it doesn't solve it and I need to replace it anyway, so avoid buying this. Some old valves have been redesigned and the new kits won't work on the old valves like these Hardy 700 series valves, so you need to replace the entire valve if it's giving you trouble. In these cases of old valves, it's better to not even open the valve if you aren't prepared to replace it right then. How do you tell the difference? The old Hardy valves have pan head screws where the new Irritrol design has hex screws. Oh, and if the top isn't covered in mud, you can read the name Hardy on it. Attaching pipe to the valves. I will give you an important quick tip here. We learned the hard way that the pitch on Schedule 80 risers don't necessarily match the thread pitch in the sprinkler valves, so it can cause the valves to split open like this. We split a bunch of valves before figuring out what was causing it. So consider using PVC fittings like male adapters instead. Just be sure you're gluing the fitting onto Schedule 40, or if you use Schedule 80, be sure it's extruded pipe and not molded. Pipe glue typically doesn't stick long term to molded pipe. Okay, here are my favorites in three different categories. Anti-siphon valves are only available in 3 quarter inch and 1 inch versions, regardless of the brand. I use Hunter ASV anti-siphon valves. They're tough, compact, and easy to work on. I love how the plunger under the anti-siphon cap is connected, unlike the Irritrol version. When you attempt to put the Irritrol anti-siphon cap on, sometimes the plunger will fall out and not line up correctly with the cavity, so you end up with this mess. This being said, Ear Troll is a good second choice if you can't get the Hunter. Now, if you're needing inline valves like these because they're being installed in the ground in a valve box like this, then my first pick is the Hunter PGV for one inch. And the Ear Troll 2500 TF is a good second. The Hunter PGV is available in 1 inch, inch and a half, and 2 inch versions. The two larger ones are three way valves. They have a pressure test rating over 600 psi. 
The Air Troll 2500 TF is only a one inch valve. Hunter also makes an ICV line of valves that are high quality, but they are pretty bulky. The one thing I like about the ICVs is their dirty water version that's good for well systems. This Air Troll 700 series valve is a high quality ultra flow design and is available with three quarter inch, one inch, and inch and a half inlets. But I don't use it as a first choice because the diaphragm assembly is a hassle to deal with, especially if you can't completely stop the inflow of water while you're working on it. The diaphragm will float and go cockeyed. You definitely don't want to use these on the previously mentioned dirty water situations. There are very few three quarter inch inline sprinkler valves on the market. So when folks are using three quarter inch pipe, people tend to go with this or the Toro version. But my best recommendation is to use a one inch inline valve and bush down with a one by three quarter inch male adapter. For your convenience, I have included this fitting on the resources page linked below since these are not always available at your local suppliers. So, my favorite standard inline valve is the Hunter PGV, and my second favorite is the Air Troll 2500 TF. And a bonus, my third favorite is the Hunter ICV series. If you need a three-way valve because your inlet piping is coming up from under the valve, I choose the Air Troll 100 series. It is tough and compact and has a glass reinforced nylon design just like the 700 series to withstand high pressure situations. It's easy to service and has an easy diaphragm assembly. Just pop it in. So my favorite three-way valve is the Air Troll 100 series. It's available in one inch, inch and a half, and two inch. My second favorite is the Hunter PGV series. Okay, now where can you get all these awesome sprinkler valves? Just click on the resources link below and I will send you in the right direction. Next up in the series is the best drip system components. Remember to get your free downloads, including this one I told you about at the beginning of the video. This free download has photos of the most common pro-grade sprinkler valves. Just click down below. What professional grade sprinkler valves do you prefer and why? What sprinkler system questions do you have that you'd like a video for? Let me know in the comment section below. See you next time.